Hey everybody, it's Miss Amy at the Grass Valley Library. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Random Acts of Science. This program is gonna to come to you weekly in conjunction with Nevada County Media, where we're gonna be doing a new uh, science experiment that you can do at home with the materials that you generally have on hand. Today we're gonna to be talking about uh, melting points and freezing points, and we're gonna be making some sorbet in a bag. And it's a lot of fun and it tastes good too. So let's get started. There's a couple things you're gonna need. Um, you're gonna need a juice box or some sort of juice and a small Ziploc bag. You're gonna need a large Ziploc bag and hopefully some crushed ice. You're gonna need some rock salt and you're gonna need a, hopefully a bowl to eat it, eat it from when you're all done. Um, if your ice is just the cubed variety and not the crushed variety, you can do what I just did, which is wrap that bag up in a towel, take it outside with a hammer, and smash it into um, crushed ice. That can be just as fun as the rest of the experiment. So, all right, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is get this juice um, into a small plastic bag, a Ziploc bag. Um, this is probably a cup, maybe a cup and a half of juice. So if you just have a, um, a glass of orange juice or a carton of juice or something in the, in the fridge, uh, you can use about that much of that. Okay, there it is. And then the important part is to seal the bag up, but to burp the air out. You don't want any air in this bag. So I'm gonna do that kind of trying to get all the air squeezed out of there as I burp it out. Okay, so there's my bag of juice. Um, and then we've got this bag of ice. So we're gonna add the juice bag to the ice bag. And then we're gonna add some salt to the whole shebang here. And when you add salt to ice, it tends to lower the freezing point of the ice and it wants to it wants to melt is what it wants to do so i'm going to go ahead and add some salt this is the same process and, and the same reasoning for why we add salt to the roads in the winter to melt that layer of ice on top to make them less slick or to sidewalks to make them less slippery um, it lowers that freezing temperature of the ice and helps it melt a little bit faster um, so that we get down to a, a, a better surface to walk on so once you get the salt in here we're going to mix it up so i'm going to get started with that and i'm going to come back and we're going to see what it looks like all right, it's about 10 minutes later. I did have some technical difficulties. My bag sprung a leak. I didn't have a big enough tray to catch all the um, liquid that was coming out of there, but, but it did work. And it, that salt um, did lower the freezing temperature. And what happens with all of this, why this becomes um, icy, is because that salt, when it's lowering that freezing temperature, that means that the ice wants to melt. And in order to melt, it needs some heat. So it's in this sealed bag with very little air in it, um, and there's nothing in there that's warmer than the ice, right? Except for the unfrozen juice. So that's the heat source that's gonna help that ice to melt. So that ice just goes ahead and extracts the heat. It pulls it right out of that juice until there's no heat left in the juice and that juice freezes. So that's what we just did. That's kind of how your refrigerator works as well. It's an interesting concept. So let's give it a taste. I believe this is apple juice. So we're having apple sorbet today. Um, as you can see, it's looking really good. Let me give it a little taste and see. Ooh, it tastes really good, actually. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Random Acts of Science, and I hope to see you again soon.